Shalom everyone, this is Shlomo Katz and you're listening to The Soul of Israel on the landofisrael.com and Land of Israel Network. Happy post-Pesach, a good Chol HaMoed. Chol HaMoed? That's right. My dearest brothers and sisters, this period that we're in right now between Pesach and Shavuot is like one long Chol HaMoed. It's this intermediate holiday filled with a lot of very, very important dates. Dates on the Jewish calendar, which makes our heart and soul feel more alive than ever, which is what we're going to be discussing today, together with my precious brothers, Mamash, my, two of the closest people in my heart, Rabbis Jeremy Gimpel and Arya Bramowitz. Shalom Aleichem, guys. Shalom Rav Shalom. Good morning. Good house Pesach. Powerful. It was an intense Pesach. What about you, Jeremy? It was a Pesach that will never be forgotten. <laughs> yeah. Never. So I just want to put it out there that we're dedicating today's words for this, please God, the speedy recovery, very precious soul of a little, little boy, Yakir Ephraim ben Rachel Dvora. So this period that we're in right now, for me on a personal level, is a very, very special one since I get to put the guitar down for a while. And it's downtime. It's less, there's not a lot of lot, the concerts or weddings going on because it's the period of the Omer, which has a lot of different explanations and, and manifestations through other things as well. But today what we wanted to focus on is one very specific thing, and that is the beauty and the gift to count our time, which is what we're busy doing every day. Today is the 10th day, correct, boys? which is a week and three days from the time that we left Egypt towards, we're marching towards our Sinai. And the question that everyone has is, what is the point of just counting these days? You should count your days every day of your life. Every day is a gift. But something very, very important took place on Pesach, and it's enabling us to now understand what exactly happened on Pesach. Pesach night, Rip Shlomo Karlbach used to say, God gave us a glimpse of who he was. On the last day of Pesach, when we crossed the Red Sea and we jumped into water, God gave us a glimpse of who we are. And what we're trying to do now during the Omer is to build the vessel for the revelation of who God was to us on Seder night. And we're also trying to build the vessel of who we really are, which is a glimpse of what we got on the seventh day of Pesach, when we jumped into the water. As we said last year, I remember, maybe it was two years ago, Reb Shlomo Kabach used to say that freedom without direction is just another form of slavery. And those words ring so deep and so true in my heart whenever I hear those words. Because we always think that we'll be happy when we stop having a problem. Or when I rid myself of a certain habit. And then we're freaked out and shocked as to how come things aren't really so good right now? I just wanted that bad thing. You know, I thought that if only I can snap out of that bad habit and stop suffering, now things would be good. And God says to us, look, you guys all thought that the whole point is to stop being slaves. That was Shlav Aleph. That was the first phase. But a much bigger phase is gaining a direction and working towards it. I know that one of the greatest gifts and curses of living in today's day and age is that everyone's freelancing all the time. None of us really have bosses anymore that are sitting over us saying, you have to do this, you have to do that. On the one hand, it gives us the ability to have more of a choice as to what we want to do. But I'm reminded of a, of a visit I had of a friend of mine who was just about to be um, finishing his army service after three years of intense army service, where someone stands above you and tells you exactly what to do, what not to do. It was very hard, especially for someone that's so independent. And he came to me, I was living here in Efrat already, and he said to me, Shlomo, I'm so nervous about next week. I'm like, what are you so nervous about? He's like, the day that no one is going to tell me what I'm supposed to be doing that day. I said, what, what are you nervous about? That's freedom. He's like, I guess I'm still a slave because I really want someone that next morning, the morning after I'm done with the army, to still tell me what I have to do today. Because not knowing what I'm supposed to do terrifies me. 
we see that when certain people were freed from slavery, they went crazy because they had no idea what to do with freedom. Freedom without direction is another form of slavery. God is giving us right now the ability to stay focused on the purpose of why we left Egypt in the first place. Why did we stop being slaves in the first place? So here we are. We left Mitzrayim. And now what? God is saying to us every single day, count your day. Was today another day where you looked for someone to tell you what to do? Or was today a day that you used to figure out what you want to do and who you want to be? I want free people to show up when I give them the Torah in seven weeks from now as we're counting down this concept, this time of Svirata Omer. I don't know about you guys, but to me, not having someone telling me what to do really has played with my mind. I mean, you're, are you, you're, you're basically bosses to employees, correct? <laughs> On a certain level, without uh, laughing too much about it. On some level, that is true. Yeah. Oh, I'm subservient to all. Whatever he tells me to do, I do. Right. <laughs> so would you want someone ab above you appointed? I would love someone above me. Why? Because I spend the majority of my tri time trying to really understand what I want to. I sometimes wish there was like, you know, a, a, a Rav Kahana. You know, I would say, tell me what to do and I'll do it. Just send me in the right direction. Tell me what the mission is. Tell me what the calling of the generation and is. The well, my role isn't, and the fact that there isn't, and the fact that there isn't, what does that do to you? It's tormenting. It's difficult. It's painful. It's, yeah. I, I walk around sometimes feeling like a total waste. Most not, of our meetings are, okay. So what are we supposed to do now? Yeah. Because there's no one to tell us what to do. When so we, have we to leave this world, there's going to be a montage of all the times we're saying, what, what are we what doing now? And what now? What are we supposed to do now? What is the mission right now? What does Hashem want of us right now? It's constantly changing and it's constantly demanding us to really, I guess, tune in not only to the freedom, but to like, what are we supposed to do? But, there... but when you, if you were under someone, you wouldn't even have, I would say, the freedom to think like that or to ask like that. And that is exactly, who, this is who we're becoming. We're becoming people again that, that, that have to start thinking. A slave doesn't even entertain these thoughts of what now? What now? What do you mean what now? What now is what was yesterday and what's going to be tomorrow. So that's why this period of Svirata Omer, I believe with the modern day calendar that we have now, together with a few very crucial dates on the Jewish calendar from years years before, provide for us the direction. What am I talking about? In these seven weeks are some of the most powerful days that form our identity. Tomorrow night, Yom HaShoah. Next week, Yom HaZikaron, Yom HaTzmaut. Following that, we have days like Pesach Sheni, very underrated holiday. Lag Omer, the day of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Yom Yerushalayim. That's all sandwiched in this Tkufa of Sfirat Omer. I think that if we took each one of these dates, obviously Yom HaShoah, the Holocaust Memorial Day, and Yom HaZikaron, these days, who if you're not in Israel, you just can't taste it. But they really form who we are. They sense, they give us a sense of direction. Oh yeah. Why am I still alive? Why am I in Israel? What am I trying to do here? Why do we have independence here? Or hopefully we will have real independence here one day. Why do we have that? Why do we have Yerushalayim? God, why are you giving me a second chance? God, what are you whispering to me through the secrets of the more esoterical places in the Torah? Being in constant conversation with God of why, for what purpose are you giving me all these gifts? And when I ask those questions of why are you giving me all these gifts, please, Hashem, I don't want to be a zombie here. Life's intense. Life can get very, very freaky at times. I don't want to just go through them being a survivor. I want to be someone that's thriving. I want to have an identity. I don't want to just be a free person, free from having an Egyptian slave master over me. I want to be a servant of yours. I'm free to become a servant. I'm free from slavery to become a servant. That's the period that we're in of Svirata Omer, of counting every single day. I mean, <clears throat> usually we have countdowns, and here we have count-ups. 
if you notice that, right? The final countdown. Here we don't know. It's 49 days left till we get the Torah. 48 days till we get the Torah. Now it's, I'm one day out of Egypt. I'm two days out of Egypt. I'm three days out of Egypt. Kind of like when you're in the 12-step program, you always say how many days you're sober. You're counting each day that you've chosen freedom. You don't say, okay, if I'm clean, if I'm clean for 10 years, I'll have a drink in 10 years, and now we're up to nine years. We're, when you grow towards something, you don't do a countdown. You count up. So in our barrel that we're carrying with us of life, what a hard question it is to look into our barrel of life and say, how many days that were filled with meaning and longing and freedom can I really say I put into this barrel of meaning? How much can I really look at my life and say, I counted my days. I was, my days are leading up to somewhere and not just, thank God I got through it. That's the difference between a slave and a servant. A slave is just thankful that he got through another day. A servant is excited that tomorrow will be even more of an opportunity to get closer. And there's a famous story, one of my favorite stories, about the clock of the seer of Lublin. The seer of Lublin, Rabbi Yaakov Yitzchak Horowitz, who was a f- tremendous Hasidic master, we're talking about the 19th century, the early 19th century. The Chose of Lublin, he had a certain clock that was known that the Chose had his own time for everything. One day, many years after, uh, a few years after he passed away, one of his students was passing through a town and he had to stop in a Kretschmer. That's an inn, a broken down inn in Poland in the early 19th century. These are one of these broken down shacks that you hear every beep, every bop, whatever it is. And what happened was, is that the Choz of Lublin's student, the Or, his name was Reb Zev Wolf, he was known as the Or HaMeir, the Shining Light, he asked if he could stay in this inn, they gave him a certain room, but everyone in the hotel, Mozif Motel, knew that he was up all night. Because like I said before, these are the kind of motels that you walk a little bit to the right, the whole motel kind of goes to the right with you. So everyone knew that this, this rabbi was up all night. No one knew why, but when he came out for the next morning for checkout, and the person behind the desk said to him, Rabbi, we could tell you didn't really have a, you couldn't sleep last night. Was everything okay? And he looked very excited. He said, let me ask you a question. By any chance in the world, whose clock was on the wall in the room that I stayed in? So the person behind the desk said, well, actually, that clock belongs to the seer of Lublin. Did you know him? Did I know him? He was my master, my soul master, my Rebbe. But how did you know that that was the clock of this? How did you know there was something special about that clock? This person behind the desk asked this Reb Zevvof. He says, my friend, let me tell you. Most clocks, most way, most way people tell time in this world is that with every tick and every talk, they say, we made it through another day. We made it through another day. But that's slaves. With the Seer of Lublin's clock, every single tick and tock, I could hear it telling me, we're one step closer to the redemption. We're one day closer to getting closer to God. Tomorrow's going to be even sweeter than today. How could you sleep with such a tick and a tock in your ear? So our dear friends all over the world, I give us a bracha to tune into Sfirat Omer in accordance with the clock of the Seer of Lublin. Not only are we thankful that we're not slaves anymore, but our hearts should be open to understanding and believing that what God wants to give us is only greater and bigger and more exalted than whatever we were at today. But the vessel through which I can accept the good of Hashem is what we're working on widening and refining the more we stay away from Egypt. Today is one day that I left Egypt. Now I'm already 10 days that I let that slave mentality be on me. And today's another day that my vessel for redemption is getting bigger and bigger. Friends, I want you to know I'm under no illusion that my words right now are easy or simple. They're the hardest. They make or break us, and quite often they break us. 
But when you add prayer into faith, you come out with a fine vessel of steel, of a, a rock that can't be touched. And this is the period of time after remembering that six million Jews were killed. Thousands and thousands of soldiers have been killed so we could be here. Now's the time to look at the world and say, what a time to be alive. That I still believe in God and I still believe that He wants to do so much more good than I could ever imagine in my life. I bless us all to not be shocked by living miracles. Amen. Israel's a thriving democracy in the Jewish state too, and those concepts usually work beautifully together, but sometimes it creates tension. Hello, this is Gil Hoffman, host of Inside Israel Today, here on the Land of Israel Network, on thelandofisrael.com. We here at Inside Israel Today go into what's going on behind the scenes in Israel, giving you an insider's look of all the excitement in Israeli politics and why that should give you hope for the future rather than make you depressed. Yes, it can be done, so tune in and find out how here on the Land of Israel Network on thelandofisrael.com.